Hi, this is our second video from the 3D sound tutorial series. In the previous one we covered the basic theory about how we perceive sound in space and had a quick run through the audio formats. In this one we will have a look at the history of spatial music and talk about ambisonics, one of the most frequently used spatialization techniques nowadays. Sound specialization is placing a sound in three-dimensional space. Although it's usually associated with electroacoustic music, its origins go back to as early as mid-16th century. Some of the earliest examples of acoustic spatial music are composer Adrian Willard's works for spatially separated choirs and instrumental groups. The later examples of space as a compositional element include Berlioz's Requiem with four separated brass ensembles, Mahler's Symphony No. 2 for multiple orchestras, choirs and offstage ensembles. Charles Ives' unanswered question with spatial separation of three groups of instruments. Stockhausen's Gruppen for three orchestras. Or Grise's Tempus Ex Machina for six percussionists. As for spatial electroacoustic music, first experiments happen in the 1950s when Pierre Schaeffer, in collaboration with Pierre Henri, introduces space potentiometer. The device had four large hoops surrounding the performer whose arm movements controlled the spatialization. In 1952, in his work Williams Mix, John Cage used eight monotapes, each playing through its speakers distributed in space. In 1956, Stockhausen completed his work Gesang der Junglinge for electronic sound and recordings of a soprano boy. This work is generally considered to be the first piece for multi-track tape using a four-track machine. Perhaps the first true quadraphonic composition was Stockhausen's Contacte for electronic sounds. In 1958, poem Electronique of Edgar Vares was performed at Philips Pavilion in Brussels at World's Fair. The piece was distributed over 425 loudspeakers with the 11-channel system. Later, in 1970, Expo 70 in Osaka hosted several multi-channel installations. Here, in German Pavilion, Stockhausen performed concerts from a station in the center of the sphere over 55 loudspeakers. In 1974, François Bell designed Acusmonium, a loudspeaker orchestra consisting of speakers with different shapes, sizes and tone colors. On this system, stereo sound files are spatially distributed across the speaker array using the mixing desk, and this is what we call sound diffusion. Later, in 1982, another essential sound diffusion system, Birmingham Electroacoustic Sound Theatre, was founded. If these multi-channel systems were rare luxury at that time, nowadays there are many concert spaces and studios around the world equipped with the speaker arrays. For example, Notam Studio 3 in Oslo, Kubust at Zetkaim in Karlsruhe, IM in Graz, Empak Studios in New York, The Cube in Virginia Tech, The Spiral and the University of Huddersfield and many more. As the number of speakers and audio channels was raising, there was a need for tools to handle them. Therefore, several spatialization techniques have been implemented. Among them was ambisonics, developed in the 1970s in the UK. Ambisonics is a technique for capturing and reproducing a three-dimensional sound field. We have three main steps when working with this technique. Recording, encoding and decoding. Multi-channel audio recording can be made with a sound-filled microphone. 
This is a microphone that has four closely spaced capsules that capture three-dimensional sound field. There are microphones with a higher number of capsules as well. For example, Eigen mic with 32 capsules that gives us 32 channel sound file. Four capsule microphone captures four channels of audio and that is referred to as A format. A format is converted to B format to render the raw output of the capsules to a perfectly aligned set of signals. This way, the spacing between the capsules is compensated, as if the sound was recorded from a virtual point in space. Remember that working with ambisonics doesn't require A format recordings. Mono and stereo files can be used as well. Encoding is when all A format, mono or stereo files are placed into three-dimensional space or spherical harmonics domain. The spatial resolution of a sound source is dependent on the number of spherical harmonics components which the three-dimensional sound field is decomposed into. Spherical harmonics can be imagined as the virtual figure of eight microphones pointed to different directions in space. The number of spherical harmonics defines the number of audio channels as well as ambisonics order. For example, in first order B format, we have four spherical harmonics, W, X, Y, Z, where W is omnidirectional, the only channel that has no figure of eight pattern, X is front and back, Y is left and right, Z is up and down. Second order consists of nine spherical harmonics and nine audio channels. W, X, Y, Z plus Phi more, meaning more spatial directions are covered. That means sound source localization will be much sharper in 7th order than in 1st order. Decoding is when all the encoded channels are sent to the speaker array for playback. One of the ambisonic's most significant advantages is that encoded audio channels do not correspond to speaker feeds meaning we can decode the same encoded file to different numbers of loudspeakers. For example, 36-channel sound file can be played back with 8 loudspeakers. However, remember that feeding a low-order encoded file to higher-order decoders will result in a spatial blur. In ambisonics, we can work with 2D and 3D formats depending on the speaker configuration. 3D ambisonics can be played back by the speaker array that besides the main horizontal ring also has an additional layer or layers of speakers on height. When there is only one horizontal ring of speakers, we decode to 2D ambisonics. The same order in 2D and 3D formats consists of different numbers of audio channels, and that's because in 2D vertical spherical harmonics are removed. Here you can see the table of orders and corresponding channel number in both 2D and 3D formats. For a successful exchange of ambisonics files, the sender and receiver have to agree on the convention, ordering and normalization methods of audio channels. That's because in ambisonics, decoder convention must match the encoder convention. There are two types of channel numbering, FUMA and ACN. FUMA is an older standard, and it's usually used up to third order. Channel order looks like this. W, X, Y, Z. ACN, same as ambisonics channel numbering, is a newer format used with all the orders, and it looks like this. W, Y, Z, X. When it comes to normalization, SN3D or SN2D are the most frequently used ones. SN stands for semi-normalized. In SN3D, no channel will ever exceed the peak value of the W channel. SN3D in the ACN channel order is a common choice for new software development, and the format consisting of this two is called AMBIX. Okay, I guess it was enough theory for one tutorial, although we only covered the basics. If you would like to read more about ambisonics, you can find a lot of information on the internet you can dig into. What we will do in the next and last tutorial is to try to use the theory that we learned today in practice. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye!